what we have before us here is a track book. This is a book of sedimentary rock that was bound by Edward Hitchcock back in the 1800s. This book is used to help demonstrate, at least for our purposes, to help demonstrate how trackways were captured in the past. What you had in the Connecticut River Valley some, oh, 200 million years ago, you had mountains to the east and mountains to the west. And these huge mountains were you know, towering, a couple miles high. And it would rain on the mountains. And as it would rain on the mountains, the erosion would occur on the mountains, and it would carry the sediment from the top of the mountains down toward the valley. And at the bottom of the valley, you'd have a lake. And the lake would be the place where all the water would collect. But as the water would begin to move off the mountain and slowly make its way down off the mountain, it would drop the larger sediment right near the mountain, the gravel and whatnot, right next to the edge of the mountain. And then the water would continue to move slowly along, meandering its way toward the lake. And as it would meander its way toward the lake, the speed of the water would be reduced. And as it would reduce the speed of the water, the amount of sediment it would carry and the kind of sediment it would carry would change. It would become well sorted and the sediment would become smaller and finer and finer until the finest sediment, beautiful silts, would be kind of set off into the lake. One layer and then another and then another. Over time, this mud would pile up. This beautiful sedimentary mud would pile up. And as it would pile up, maybe at some point an animal might go across the mud. And as it would do that, its feet might sink deeply in the mud. And you can just imagine one foot going down and going, getting stuck in the muck a little bit, and the other foot going down until its foot was way deep in the mud. And then you can just imagine the foot would exit with the same sound, and then, and the animal would walk away. Many times what would happen is a little rain might occur and the mud might fill back in and you might not see anything on the surface. But deep below the surface, we can find evidence of that animal having walked through that mud. Now, some 200 million years later, we're able to go back to this mud, which is now lithified and become a wonderful shale. And we can look at this shale and find something that happened below the surface. To do that, we go back to that same layering. We can find that there's layering on the side of the rock. And the layering is a function of that original deposition. We're going backwards now. We're going to take a small butter knife, bring it along the edge of the rock where we can see a layer, tap it, and it will actually split along one of the layers of deposition. And as it does that, we begin to discover in the layers what happened prior to today. And what you can see here is you can see the kind of the, the imprint of an animal coming out, almost like a natural cast. And then you see this impression. We can break it a little bit deeper, and we begin to see more evidence. And we can break it again, even deeper. And we see more evidence of the same animal, again, a cast of the impression and an impression itself. If we go deep enough, we begin to see it disappear. And what we're looking at, at the bottommost layer, the disappearance of this impression, is we're looking at really what would might be called an undertrack. So this would be under the surface of where the animal may have actually walked. This layer may have actually been where the animal stepped, where it ended its footprint. This might be where the animal began to withdraw its foot. And you can see the little splaying of mud in the back. And again, the animal was withdrawing its foot and it splayed in the back here again. And lastly, this is where the mud had filled in over what was there.